If you have a taste for terror, then you have a date with Carrie. Just kidding. Welcome to the Horror Corner, the channel where you can find book and movie comparisons, spooky theories, Easter eggs, and much more on Stephen King's work. In today's video, I will be reviewing the top five book and movie comparisons for Stephen King's very first novel, Carrie. Carrie White is a 16-year-old girl who lives with her fanatically religious and abusive mother, Margaret White, who believes everything is a sin. Carrie is bullied at school by her peers and has always been known as the girl no one likes. When Carrie discovers she has telekinetic powers, the ability to move things with her mind, she takes advantage of them to get revenge on her classmates and all the people who ever looked down on her. One night at her junior prom, Chris Harginson pulls the nastiest trick ever. This prank pushed Carrie too far and caused her to fly into a murderous phase that resulted in a town wrecking havoc. Before we jump into the comparisons, be warned that there will be spoilers. If you haven't watched Carrie yet but would like to, then I suggest you do that first and then come back to the video. Here we go! Number 5. Carrie's Physical Appearance In Stephen King's 1974 novel, Carrie struggles with acne and being overweight, which are two main reasons why she is bullied. In the movie, she has a small and wiry frame with clear skin. Gotta be honest though, Sissy Spacek did an outstanding job playing this role. She gives a really iconic performance and creates a dramatic act for the audience to better understand her intense fear of her mother and her constant inner conflict relating to pleasing her mother and being a normal teenager. Anyway, back to the point. Her physical appearance is a major point stated in the book that is not shown in the movie. Number four, Margaret White's character portrayal and death. If you've read the book, you probably know that Margaret White is given a more detailed and explanatory background of her childhood and before she had Carrie. It is said that she was estranged from her parents and extremely driven by her religion. She is clearly more abusive to Carrie in the book than in the movie. Although the movie does depict abuse, it is not nearly as extreme as described in the novel. Additionally, Margaret's appearance is different in the book. She's described as large and ugly with white hair and glasses, while in the movie, she appears to be younger with long reddish hair. Finally, in the book, Carrie telekinetically stops her mother's heart, killing her, while in the film adaptation, she moves the kitchen knives through the air and stabs her mother against the wall, crucifying her. Number three, Sue Snell makes it to the prom. When Sue and Chris get banned from going to the prom after traumatizing Carrie and refusing to stay at after school detention, Sue stays home while Chris Harginson and Billy Nolan wait under the stage for the moment to dump the bucket of pig's blood on Carrie. That was in the novel. In the movie, Sue ends up sneaking into the school through the back door of the gym where she awaits the moment of terror. However, she gets caught and is physically shoved out of the auditorium. Both the novel and the film adaptation have Sue Snell as the only survivor after prom night. Number two, post-prom events are shuffled. In the movie, after Carrie murders a vast majority of students and teachers, she walks home bloody and barefoot and telekinetically sends Chris and Billy flying through the air in their car, colliding to the ground in a gruesome explosion. She takes a bath and seeks comfort from her mother, which does not end well. In the novel, Chris and Billy flee the prom and retreat to a roadhouse for a post prank as Carrie goes home and gets stabbed in the heart. From there, Carrie wanders to the roadhouse where her mother told her she was conceived, and there she kills Chris and Billy by hurling them and their vehicle into the sketchy bar.
Finally, Sue shows up, drawn by Carrie's mental messages of distress. Telepathically, Carrie speaks with her, forgives her, then dies in her arms. Number one, Carrie's powers in the ending. The novel does a better job at exploring Carrie's powers more deeply and gives the audience more detailed insight as to how powerful she really is. For instance, there is a flashback in the book in which Carrie makes a rock rain down on the house after her mother scolds her, and later she threatens that she'll make the rocks come down again if her mother doesn't let her go to the prom. However, Director Brian De Palma stated that this scene would have been very challenging to film and they would end up having to spend a ton of money to pay for the damage and destruction. Towards the end, when Carrie goes on a rampage at the prom in the book, she ends up damaging so much of her town that the police and firefighters showed up and news reporters were constantly interviewing witnesses. In the movie, Carrie really only destroys the school, Chris and Billy's car, and her house. Not much else from there. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you liked the video, be sure to hit that like button right smack, and if you didn't like the video, also make sure to hit like. Let me know in the comments down below what I forgot to include. I would love to hear what you have to say. Feel free to add any other questions, comments, or concerns regarding Carrie or Stephen King in general. Also be sure to turn that red subscribe button gray with post notifications on to see more from my channel or you'll float too. Thanks again and I'll be back next weekend. Bye guys!